everybody. Welcome back to You Can't Win. This is Tom here, and I'm joined by Donald. And today we're just going to talk a little bit about things going on, talk about the podcast maybe a little bit, and then get into some questions. So how you doing, Donald? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Doing pretty good. Just had some Korean soup, or like a Korean-style soup. It was really great. Nice That's and cool. spicy. <clears throat> Yeah, is it like a garlicky or something? I don't really know, like Korean. Uh, I don't think there was much garlic in it. Tabs made it, but yeah. it was like a, she made the broth with anchovies. Uh, There's a few other things that you know sound really like strong flavors, you know. So it gives the broth yeah. kind of a. It doesn't taste like anchovies, really. It just that just kind of gives it like a nice kind of salty umami thing. And sure. then there was some vegetables, potatoes, zucchini, mushroom. It was really good. Cool. I saw someone say that Tab should have a food blog or something like that, like an actual, I don't know, get into it with the, uh, some of the details. That we should do a food blog? Yeah, no, no, that Tab's and you oh, yeah. should have. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I mean, that I would know. be fun, but it, it's like... Work for no uh, reason, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. A, a little bit. It's like it's, it's, it's hard enough to get <laughs> dinner on the table every day, sure. you know, and then we got to yeah, make yeah, it like yeah. all production. Yeah, that's true. It does but seem I, fun to do as a one-off every now and again, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I had I made myself craft dinner, so that's that's where I'm at. With the <laughs> well, right that's now. always good too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I one of my favorite things to whip together if I'm just kind of don't have ideas and want to make something real quick. Yeah, it's just kind of like macaroni and cheese with whatever you know. Yeah, you throw everything in there. I like broccoli in there, which is kind of weird, but it works. And yeah, uh, you know, well, yeah. Pop- could have pot dogs even sometimes sure well i mean what my go-to thing for some reason now has been like if i'm really tired at night or something i just want to make a dinner that you know whatever i i like toast cheese like i have toasted cheese and bacon sandwiches which is it's probably the i don't know it's not a great thing to have as a go-to <laughs> meal kind of thing you know what I mean? sure like, yeah should probably be but uh I don't know. I'll have that sometimes like a few nights a week because of just I find it hard to focus on that kind of stuff. But whatever. That's not too dissimilar from what I've been eating for breakfast, just like a cheese on um like a rye bread or a Yeah, yeah. A thing like that. That's kind yeah. of been my thing. <laughs> Cup of coffee and then some dark rye with cheese. Sure. And uh, uh yeah, I'm cleaning out the, the pipe <laughs> really quickly after that. <laughs> Do you ever have like malt bread? Have you ever had that? Like it's like it's like a uh i, different I type of feel like i know what that tastes like i must have had it at some point it yeah. sounds familiar i had that again recently and i really like that but yeah i like um, darker breads you know cool so i guess we wanted to get into just reflecting on you know our milestones and whatnot and actually yeah we doing this for a bit you know well, it's been like what six months something like something that, a little that more. yeah yeah i mean we've been talking about doing something like this for a while and uh, you know a perfect storm we finally got it together i think and it's been rolling on now and we did start pretty bare bones doing it not really knowing all the technical stuff not knowing all the little things you have to kind of do every week and stuff but i don't know it's been fun i mean it gets to the point now where we don't i don't think we overthink the getting started on it you know it's like yeah. it's become a routine yeah. to a certain mm-hmm. degree where uh um, we're still learning stuff like I've started editing some of the premiums and stuff and learning how to do that and appreciating some of the work that goes into that and a bit more and all that kind of stuff has been fun to kind of get into but yeah I think it's been good because uh, it's just a really it's nice to have something regular like this that we're doing that's not just kind of posting whatever just having something extra that you know we get to talk with some interesting people that we know and I don't know it's been cool yeah I, I've been I think probably spending less time and energy directed towards social media and more on this, just like trying to figure out who would be a good guest, what would be a good topic, you know, that kind of stuff. And I feel like that's, that's better. You know, I I feel like we have more intelligent conversations and more, not always intelligent, I suppose, you know, we talk about (laughs) dumb stuff too, but just, I don't know. It's, it's a little bit better than like reading all the dumb tweets all day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, I still read all the dumb tweets all day, so I don't know if I can, <laughs> I can totally, but yeah, no, it does. It does at least point towards the future for me, at least where I kind of see how my relationship to posting can change over time and become a bit more mature or something instead of just totally goofy all the time kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you just, 
have a little bit of an edge there where I can kind of orient towards a bit better of a relationship with, uh, I don't know, because especially just with posting, it's gotten to the point where it's become one of those things where you know how sometimes you might find it hard to have conversations with people that you just kind of meet around town or something like that about politics. Like you wouldn't want to kind of get into it. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, like that's, it, that's what it's starting to get like for online stuff for me where it's got, we, we've, we've gotten to the point now with everything that if people reply at me and stuff and just try to argue with me about things, I have no interest in getting into it really most of the time. And that's different because before for years, I would really enjoy kind of going back and forth or getting into it or something. And now it's kind of gotten to the point where, yeah, I'm not really as interested in that. So I've kind of get beyond that. And I don't know, there is kind of overall arching kind of problem that really Twitter is really good at finding the dumbest things people have ever said. <laughs> and and that's really funny. <laughs> like, that's really cool to be able to like read a New York Times article by someone complaining that, you know, they've been compared to a bed bug or something and making it huge deal that's it's really fun for that but it's almost like one of those like great brave new world like soma things <laughs> kind of thing where you're like constantly bombarded by these really funny things that you kind of have to take a step back and go oh man if i just spend my whole life really entertained by this <laughs> stuff isn't there some you know value in saying intelligent things with intelligent people or something you know like learning the things and actually trying to I don't know, advance. Yeah. So yeah, I feel yeah, like that's the the medium of Twitter is very oriented towards finding things that are really funny but stupid. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one thing that, at least for me, that I try to do on this podcast is like I try to do a good job of it, you know, and I don't do that on Twitter. I don't care at all about the quality of my, like, it's almost fun to do intentionally bad, stupid tweets just because yeah. you you can and you, you know there there's something about it that sort of just motivates me to do it that way but this is like it takes a little bit of work to put it together and and you can do a good thing i, I don't know if there is such a thing as like a good tweet really yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's funny maybe like someone can put together an interesting thread or something but like it's yeah anything you can do on twitter that's quote-unquote good you can probably do it elsewhere much better you know so sure i feel like a like this, it, it makes me try to do a good job. So like that feels better than to like, just try to be shitty all the time. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's a good attitude, but it's also, uh, it's hard for me to make that transition. I think in some respects, because I, I had the same thing where I just like, when I started making those MS paint memes, like five or six years ago or something, I really committed in my brain that I would never spend too much time on each one. Like I really, I thought that was an important part of it for some reason for me. I thought, okay, I'm only going to spend, that's why I never really got into, I, I knew, I know how to use Photoshop, but I never used it for that really, because I thought it would be much more useful for me and much more like honest in some way if I just spent two minutes yeah, doing things that's together. That's how I think about posting. And, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's, that's the th same thing like with the uh, tweets. I don't ever, like I don't have drafts or anything like that. Like there's a lot of people that seems to do that where they work on things for a while. I just, I come up with it in like a minute and then just send yeah, it out yeah. and then see what happens. And I don't know. I've been lucky that I, I, it is one of those algorithm things where I, I get like a lot of response, but it's funny because I can also clearly see all the things that I do that don't go anywhere really. And I think that's good too, because it does teach you that, yeah, it's most things don't go anywhere. <laughs> those kind of, you know what I mean? It's not like, but the hard thing for me is to translate that into other areas of life kind of thing where like for writing, I was lucky early on that I didn't really have to do much editing on the first few things that I kind of sent out and I'm kind of transitioning now to, you know, being more comfortable with things getting rejected or having to be rewritten and having to be reworked. Because if I wanted to be making like enough income to buy writing to kind of help save for the future and really kind of put things together, I'd have to be just constantly churning out ideas and getting a lot of them rejected, like just constantly mm. rejected. And, uh, I don't like that. I don't like that idea. I don't know. It feels like, I don't know. I know that's the way it works. You got to play percentages and just see how, what works and see what doesn't, see what fits with the market at the time. But that's one of the funny things about Twitter is that there's not really a cost of saying something that just doesn't go anywhere because it's just like a zero, you know, like zero faves cool situation. It's not like yeah. a, 
It's not like it's not like you get an email from someone that says you will not be making a few hundred dollars for that idea or something, you know. So like I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit different. I don't know. So yeah. it's the same thing with finding a wife, Donald. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's it's a whole other bag of worms, I guess. But <laughs> maybe yeah. we'll get into that <laughs> another episode. Though. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, um. But but yeah. you know, just looking back on the podcast so far, I feel like this space has become nice in a lot of different ways in that we can kind of do what we want on any given episode and it still kind of feels cohesive and it seems like the audience is up for whatever we're doing yeah which i don't know let us know if that's not true because we're going to (laughs) be doing it but um, you know it's it's been fun like sometimes we we kind of dive into something a little more serious like a specific topic and try to really think about it or whatever talk to someone who knows what they're talking about Sometimes yeah. we just kind of goof off and, and hang out sure. with our friends kind of a thing. And yeah, I don't know. It's cool because like a lot of us, we're scattered all over the place. So doing something sure. like this where we can just kind of log on to Discord and record our conversation, like it's it's cool. Like it's uh, it feels like a, a good time or whatever. And then we can kind of do do these little like research episodes or, or discussion episodes as well. So I, I don't know. I've been really enjoying that. Yeah. And I think that the thing that surprised me at some level, I mean, I don't know what I expected at all, but is that we've been getting feedback that's quite specific and positive. So it's, it's not just, it's not just people saying, oh yeah, that's pretty good or something. It's that people have in general sort of voiced what we had hoped about certain episodes or whatever, you know, like if there's something about, you know, if we talk about anxiety or something, someone might talk to me about how it related to something that they were thinking about or you know, if we talk about even just something goofy, then, you know, and it's, it's interesting because it shows that people are actually, you know, a fair number of people are actually, you know, listening and reflecting on it and kind of getting back to us with ideas about it. So that's fun. Because if it was just kind of going out there and we didn't get any sort of response whatsoever, I thought, I I think that would have been different than this kind of thing where there's, you know, a response that, yeah. So that's definitely, I I think some of the feedback that I've enjoyed reading or that i've appreciated the most are when people seem to really connect with some of the especially like we did some episodes with andy about mental health and addiction problems and and some people contacted us about that and said that it really like touched them and stuff so that that felt good that like you know we can do this and like someone can actually like make someone feel better i don't know that that just was sure yeah cool and something i really didn't expect like this yeah 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 I don't think we started doing this with any kind of intentions or idea that that would happen. So Yeah. The thing I like on the other side of that too, is that because we know some people at least are listening pretty closely, we've also had episodes where things kind of veer in strange directions or we say things that um, we think might get a negative response or something. And we haven't really gotten that that much. I don't think we've gotten. So I feel like we would have heard it back by now if people got really angry about something we said or, um, especially if we're ta- talking about stuff like religion and, uh, you know, social issues and all different th- things like people have been pretty good about that. And also, I also like just as an aside too that I do get either negative feedback or not negative, but just kind of, I'm not going to listen to your damn podcast <laughs> kind of stuff from people that like, uh, some of the Rizone people have said that to me and stuff. And I thought that was positive in some way too, because it shows that, you know, not everyone is just kind of saying nice things for no reason or something you know like it's like yeah sure it's like the, the people that are listening are kind of getting into it and other people are like well whatever and we're like oh that's fine yeah i don't know like it doesn't i don't feel like needy about it kind of thing too so it's just good so one thing that's kind of surprised me is i've kind of felt like i've drifted away from the mainstream opinion of our circle of the internet in terms of political opinions and stuff that I've sort of lost interest in a lot of the kinds of things that people feel invested in. And sometimes I voice opinions that I feel like are going to go against the grain a lot of times, but that doesn't seem to be the case or at least to the extent that I thought like at at the very least people are willing to like hear it and not start calling us fascists or some silly stuff. You know what I mean? I don't know if, um, if I haven't drifted away from that as far as I thought or, or what, but it, that's been kind of cool too, you know, just to see that, to kind of see where I, I stand a little bit. Sure. Yeah. And I think also that's something that related to that is that I do like that we've been able to keep it pretty uh, respectful. Most of our conversations, like I don't think we've had anyone where we got really, you know, we haven't, we haven't had anyone where we were like mad about what they said or whatever, or, 
um, had to botch it or something or you know it didn't everyone has been really trying to work with us pretty well and stuff and, and yeah. that's pretty good because yeah I mean even just from our own behavior we could have leaned into it a bit and tried to you know stir up some shit or something like that kind of thing like it's like you know what I mean like we could we could have uh I don't think that's completely alien to our nature to want to kind of torch things for fun sometimes <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> So uh, the fact that we kind of kept with it and we've been doing a you know pretty good job, I think so far is 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 fun. So yeah, yeah, I've I've think I've enjoyed pretty much every guest. I th- I think that's it's been good so far. So yeah, and also we talked about this a few times, but just the diversity of people that we've been able to you know they're all people that we know pretty much, but like people from different backgrounds and stuff, and not the same circle of journalists that kind of go on everywhere kind of thing. Sometimes you know just yeah. people that you know. Yeah, that, like that's that kind of one thing that I've, I don't know if we've really talked about it, you and I, Donald, but it's, yeah. it is something that I've been thinking about is that I kind of have wanted to do our own thing before we even consider reaching out to people who are kind of, you know, visible on their own podcast yeah. or whatever and, and bringing them in. Cause I, I sort of want to like figure out what we're doing before we even think about doing stuff like that. So yeah, sure. a lot of, a lot of the guests that we have pulled have just been people that aren't guests everywhere else and and they're just yeah. like people we know and think that we would have good conversations with so i feel like that's been working pretty well i hope people have been enjoying it yeah yeah i mean because it, it can be a recipe for success in some ways to kind of just draw in people and pump it up pretty quickly but that i think that hooks you into keeping up with the debates online in the minutiae kind of stuff and you kind of have to yeah play that game and instead we've just kind of done around yeah, yeah so, i think other people I do that very well you know they do it better yeah. than we would so you sure. know why not just do our own thing that sure. only we can do you know so yeah i think it's been working so cool yeah let us know what you guys think if you have any ideas for us i think one thing i'd like to see us do in the future i want to see some more catholic guests yeah because i feel like like we've had a, a fair showing from like Muslims and sort of like having that point of view. And I, I feel like you've definitely shared a lot of, of uh, your thoughts on that kind of stuff. And we've had some guests that have, have been Catholic and, and whatnot, but I feel like we could do a little bit more on that side. And sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I think we want to do a little bit more of these research type of episodes like we did with the Epstein thing and yeah. get into some other ideas with that. That's just going to be a little bit of there's a little bit of homework involved with that. So it's not going to be like very often, you know, we're going to take our time and do a good job with it. So, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, surprised at the, we've got a lot of positive response on those ones too, which is good because I think those would be both polarizing and uh, yeah, easy turnoffs, but we haven't really had people kind of complain. We've had more, a lot more positive. So, yeah. Yeah. And I really enjoyed doing it. Like it helped me, make sense of what was going on and how to think about things in a useful and organized way and stuff. And I hope that's helped other people in the same way because, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tricky thing to get your head around. So same thing with a lot of the stuff we've been discussing, you know, religion and all this kind of stuff like that. It's, it's helpful to have this here where we can kind of figure out what, what do we think? What, what do we actually think about this stuff? Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, so maybe uh, I I kind of wanted to get your your temperature on the uh, Trudeau thing going on, you know. With yeah, so he likes um, to play with makeup and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's funny. It, I mean, the main reason it's funny is the obvious one. It's that he spent his whole time as a PR woke kind of perfect model of progressive center you know, government that everything about him is managed down to the socks. And it's uh, to have that blow up in, you know, and it's not just, you know, it's not just one plane, it's two planes, you know, (laughs) like just like having, having like one after another, after another of these things come out. Yeah. And then the other, the other thing that's funny about it too, is to, to, I think this is one that Canadians notice more, or at least some journalistic kind of people is that, it probably was known by some of the top journalists, but they didn't touch it because it was considered rude to go after him for, mm-hmm. which is kind of a funny thing. But you got to wonder in modern, like in contemporary, say the last hundred years in, in journalism, 
how many stories weren't broken because they were seemed as rude or not fully, you know, the time, like I think it was time magazine that broke the story and the United States. So it was, someone was shopping around with the stuff, obviously time for the election. So it had to be someone that wanted it, the liberals to go down. And yeah, so that's kind of, I think that's actually a bigger story in some ways that the media really is very conscious about not interfering in the election or something. Kind of, you know, that's their, their, they think that they're not supposed to, and the United States media do, doesn't care about that as much, but I think they do in certain respects, like foreign policy, security kind of things. I think there's a consensus around that, that they shouldn't really rock the boat on certain security clearances and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, so I think that's crazy. I just, yeah, that they, like the Globe and Mail or someone, Global TV or someone had some of the pictures for about a week and they just sat on them, I think. I think that's the story because they wanted to verify them. But obviously, you know, they, w- they could have verified, you know, it's not, they just didn't put them out because they probably weren't going to put them out probably, I think. So anyways, but yeah, it's funny too. I mean, that's just, that's just the, <laughs> yeah. it's, that's the, but um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little annoyed that I have to change my Halloween costume. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah figure it out uh yeah it's funny it's also obviously he's the liberal so the main sort of opposition to him in this election is sheer andrew sheer who's conservative and they were trying to pin on him very indirect sort of things kind of you know like he used to oppose gay marriage and he's pro-life personally and but even though on both of those things he said he's not really going to change the status quo, which doesn't really matter because, I mean, it does, you know, you want to know his actual beliefs, I know that. But it's one of those things where it's just the standard liberal lines where they were trying to see what worked. And it wasn't really gripping, like it wasn't really um, working. But they were obviously going to lean in the whole way this election on, you know, we're the more forward thinking party that isn't stuck up on these old bad issues. And uh that is completely exploded really like, i had to take the like a few like a day off like they couldn't they're gonna still do it they're gonna they the, the first day back what they did was try to go hard on gun control and try to make a big thing about the conservatives want like assault rifles in the hands of kids and all that kind of stuff so they tried to pick just an issue that they think that their base is united on so that they could change the channel it was actually really sad to see the top like the liberals are like the Democrats in the states where they have some people that are just full on constant message people who just constantly attack, attack, attack and try to spin everything. So their response immediately was to point out racism elsewhere that affected liberals. So their whole their feeds were just like stuff about how some of their candidates were targeted for by like anti-Semites and, you know, stuff that it was so shameful to to do that, you know, like to. Yeah to be like we're the ones that are actually the real victims and so the the standard line has actually been like the 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 meme that the liberals have run with and it seems to be working pretty well is that you know trudeau might have been racist decades decades ago but the conservatives are still racist so that's a pretty low bar that's not like that's <laughs> like uh that's like you know that's not really and my personal opinion is that it i don't i don't really care it's not like i don't know I wasn't going to vote for them anyways. I don't know if that, I don't know why I would change my vote for like who should run the country based on something like that to me. Like it doesn't really, like if it was, if it was like a socialist party and I found that the leader did that and you know, there was no other close party around. I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe I'd be able to not vote, but people deciding between the liberals and the conservatives on, I shouldn't vote for, I don't know. So I think this is my, my theory on this is just that if people were leaning towards voting conservative anyways, they'll blame it on this maybe. Yeah. But they're not right. really, it's not actually going to change anyone's vote. They're just going to say, they're going to use it as a reason why they weren't uh, something they were going to do anyways, maybe to make them look better because they didn't want to admit that it was just for tax cuts or something, you know? So I don't know, but yeah. it's, it's pretty sad. And the NDP, the Social Democratic Party, has been doing pretty, really not prepared for the election in a lot of ways. That's kind of the main story there, is that they focused all of their attention really on the probably the top 50 to 100 seats that they have any chance in whatsoever out of like 338. So in my writing and in a writing next to mine, the candidates were the people that lost the nomination race in a nearby writing. So 
<laughs> like they were just appointed after they lost somewhere else to my writing and they're next door any just because they needed someone and these people had already been vetted so and they're just ran I, I, they're, you know i voted for one of them they're just random people that's one thing that's different i think in the united states in canada is that most politicians i think in the united states really seem like politicians mm-hmm. they seem like professional people who are you know they might be loudmouths and idiots and stuff a lot of the time but they at least you can kind of like pick them out of, a, out of a lineup maybe like they look sort of polished in some ways they look sort of i don't know in canada i feel like there's a lot more people for running for minor parties where it just seems like a random person that has no interest in politics either other than just kind of oh i might try that for a bit or something so like they couldn't they couldn't like hold a conversation about like what parliament does in detail or something right like they don't know how these things work really so that's always astonishing to me because i always used to think when i was younger that like political markets were like fully developed or something where you know like everything was 100 percent like implemented you know to the point where yeah i don't know if that makes sense but just just the idea that i yeah. i think i get what you mean like it like that it was very professionalized and yeah structured and that's the, like a baseball yeah. league kind of, yeah yeah like yeah way up the farm system kind of a thing yeah and it's not uh, yeah all institutions are so weak now that just it's you can just kind of show up and probably be better at it than half the people there already kind of thing it's not like very strange i don't know i think that's why you also see people like alexandria ocasio cortez and stuff just showing up out of nowhere and putting in a lot of hard work and then just winning because of memes and stuff just because they're running against people that yeah have totally given up on hard work you know so it's like i don't know i think that's part of it too that that's actually changed my view about elections and sort of far left kind of opinions about them it's changed my view in that in some ways is that i really do think that putting work into elections can be good for in some ways Mm. because they're underdeveloped like it's not like they you know like a small small investment in politics in some ways can it has a lot more effect than i thought it did because they're running against people that are not well prepared a lot of the time so yeah yeah i don't know anyways but yeah, that's my spiel on that, I guess. Yeah. So one thing I've been wondering about this, uh, you know, blackface thing is is Canada. Does does Canada have a history of blackface and minstrel shows and all that kind of stuff the way the U.S. does, or is this kind of like a borrowed thing in some to some extent? You know, it, it does have that history too. Okay. Um, but part of the issue too is that Canada was just very very lightly populated for a long time and had very racist laws about immigration and tried to keep out uh, minorities. So a lot of it is just kind of borrowed anyways, just because that's the way that the math works. Okay. So, yeah, it's, it's, so it's, it's basically the same history. It's very integrated, you know, in that mm-hmm. respect of the history. Sure. But, but it is also sort of like there's sort of a default expectation in Canada for a long time that – because we're not the United States that the history wasn't as important here kind of in some respects, like in the United States, like say in the South or something, there's still that, at least in popular culture, there's still that belief that it could be an imminent threat kind of thing, right? Like if you're, if you're doing something racist, then uh, it could include the threat that things will return to a much worse situation quickly or something in Canada. I don't think it has that same edge as it did. Um, in the states just because uh yeah like you can the average white person doesn't believe that racism is coming back in an extreme form or exists even a lot of the time Mm -hmm. so they just kind of believe that it's not as big of a deal because you know for like trudeau he's like well i'm you know the son of a prime minister i'm obvious i'm a liberal obviously i'm not the bad guy here kind of thing so I think that's what it's sort of like a yeah it's like a it's kind of a funny way of thinking but I think it really frames a lot of the way Canadians think about these kind of stuff because you know how like in the United States there's that kind of thinking that a lot of liberals will say it's not my problem because it happened a long time ago in Canada yeah, there's sure. yeah so it's it's very similar like that in Canada but it's got the additional thing where yeah I guess it's the same in the United States in a lot of ways but I would say a lot of liberals believed it until recently too, that racism has sort of shifted to the point where people are getting benefits because of the history or something where, especially with the like indigenous people, that's like the mainstream. It was the mainstream opinion, I would say until 
even if like you still hear it all the time of that yeah. indigenous people are benefiting from the treaty system and stuff so yeah, yeah. i heard a lot of that kind of talk in <laughs> washington sure the northwest you know there's a lot yeah. more native americans up there and yeah yeah a lot of people just have this idea that like oh they don't have to pay taxes on cigarettes and da, da, da. Yeah. like it's like oh okay yeah. that that's about i guess that breaks even you know yeah and so trudeau has been very careful the whole time he's like he's been very very much is is very much a it's like just a pr campaign his whole prime ministership kind of thing like it's not so anything like he knows exactly the right thing to say about any situation that relates to social issues including say how to re, you know respect the certain terms or whatever used in different situations and all that everything like that is very carefully manicured and then the actual underlying policy there's not really that much positive change sure yeah and and then the actual the structural stuff that is really grinding on people he's still basically the same as it's always been so it's stuff like one of the grievances of the environmental movement here is they tried to push through a pipeline from alberta to bc's coast so that they get like an enormous amount of oil out and because of protests and because the bc government changed and became a more progressive government and said that we're not going to allow this they changed like the the pipeline as a business venture sort of fell apart so the government spent four point five billion dollars buying the pipeline, like infrastructure, like ideas and all that kind of stuff. You know, like the, the basically prep work and all that, and uh, the company around it, and is trying to push that through and is fighting through the courts, saying, you know, we have final say. You can't have a country without having final say and all this. So it's funny because you have the environmental minister here every day is going out there saying stuff like, you know, the Greta Thunberg's sort of story, all that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so you know 100 percent backing that sort of stuff like just 100 percent saying we are people deny that climate change is real but we need to take it seriously and the full message all the way saying that you know this is a serious thing canada's a leader on this canada's the best on this and then at the ground level just pushing through everything that's bad so it's hard though because the th the, the difference has been really that the media is 100 percent on board on that or even more right-wing a lot of the time so if you said to people, Trudeau is not as progressive as he says or something, it doesn't even really matter. Like The people that care about that are already not really going to support him. So it's just, it's all like middle class people saying, well, you know, what do you want? You want the conservatives? They're not even going to do anything. And so it's a very grim situation. And the NDP is not really in a position to exploit it because they've sort of been pushing this thin line kind of where they take, you know, just a little bit of like they've been trying to infuse some of this energy of like Bernie Sanders and Corbyn and all that. They're trying to shape their message around going against the ultra rich and stuff. And their platform has actually gotten better in some ways. But because they won't really confront that underlying, you know, they, they say the right things on a lot of these things. But because in power, like in Alberta, they haven't really been all out on this. Then, of course, there's no real, you know, it doesn't really matter then because people know that at the end of the day, they're not going to give up on the major you know how the economy is structured or something so i don't know it's not really there's not much uh hope in on the left in a lot of ways so yeah well yeah Anyways. i guess that yeah. sounds pretty <laughs> yeah. pretty familiar you yeah. Know? yeah um i had another idea about this stuff the, uh, yeah. and i was wondering if he had said like dropped an n-bomb like if there was like a n-bomb tape yeah let's say do you think that would play out differently i mean that's worse right like yeah saying that is worse than especially if it seems like really hateful like it's i feel like there's a gradient right like yeah. one thing is like him i don't know actively <laughs> like supplying weapons or money to some kind of like clan type group do you guys have the clan up there yeah well we have we there, we historically we did and we have a lot of nationalist groups though yeah like like Far right groups, yeah. Okay, I mean that would be way beyond this stuff, right? So yeah. there's there's some kind of spectrum here, and then I I feel yeah. like angrily dropping n bombs is probably the top of like an etiquette failure that you could do, yeah. and then maybe like an off color joke where you use some bad language, and then just an off color joke, and then blackface is somewhere there, and I feel like it's between off color jokes without the language and using the language itself yeah well the first thing that trudeau said in response was you know i get a little too in too much enthusiastic about costumes kind of thing <laughs> and the, 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 
the sad the sad thing is is that it's 100 percent true like anyone that has seen him has seen him in like yeah. dozens of different costumes and the only difference and, is the shoe polish really i mean <laughs> yeah so so it's funny because yeah like he, it's true that to me it's not that he's hateful or ignorant or is just being an idiot or something because because that's the thing is that in the untold story is more that he was like a frat guy that really didn't care about it's sort of like a george bush situation george bush jr yeah yeah that's what it looks like to me where like he just kind of he was maybe a jerk to people and and there's rumors and stuff that he just screams at people all the time in private and like when and that i enter to me though i don't know i just yeah i find that hard to mesh with like actual politics though because again it's what it was what we were talking about on the last premium where it's like you you, i know you're supposed to vote for like the character of the person and their judgment and making decisions but at that level it seems so far away from what's actually going on and you know like it's the stuff to me is more like is he going to build a pipeline or not kind of thing. yeah yeah and uh and it's not really you know the tough question is not really to me i don't know I think if it was like two similar candidates and one of them did something like this and the other didn't, and it was just like a deal breaker then that's fine. But to make it into like a grand, as if like everything else was going well and then there's no real alternative and you have to decide whether or not you support someone, even though they're doing something terrible, whatever, you know, like if that's the case, I understand that's like a tragic situation that you have to kind of, that's like more like a Shakespeare play or something, but it's, you know, be like, an awesome it's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but if it's just some random guy being weird and from anyways, it's like, well, whatever. He's just, a, to me, it's just that he's ignorant and uh, a goof kind of thing. Like he's just not like, yeah, he just should never have been a political person. He's like one of those guys that should have just been, you know, like an art teacher or something. Just, you would have been great at, you know, he was a drama teacher for a while and you'd just be great at that or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And he didn't have to run the country. I don't know. So Yeah, like yeah. if there was a, like you mentioned earlier, a socialist candidate that did blackface. I mean, I know what my answer would be. I would just vote for, that would actually yeah. make me want to vote. Like I would <laughs> vote otherwise. That That's like my perfect candidate. But sure. it, if you have your socialist candidate that has these problems and then a squeaky clean you know, let's not say liberal, but kind of like pseudo left, like let's say like a yeah. Liz Warren type. Sure. You know, then I guess it becomes more of a, yeah, you, you got to prioritize there. Yeah. But if people, if, if there's actually anyone in the world that is like trying to decide between the liberals and the conservatives, and this would change their vote like that, that scares me more than anything that Justin Trudeau has done. <laughs> like, it's not like, <laughs> you know, like if someone is actually like mulling it and is like, hmm. You know, well, I gotta, you know, I'd love to vote for them again, but I can't, and I'm not gonna vote for the Green Party or something. So I don't know. It's a, uh, yeah, and it, it's also funny because just as I said, like there's the the troops kind of come out, you know, like all the different partisans come out, and instead of trying to just you know bite the bullet and just say you know okay that sucks, but whatever, or you know just laughing about it a bit and moving on, they really really have to try to like so there's like a micro celebrity like like a small celebrity kind of thing in in canada called uh, ed the sock have you ever heard of him or uh, no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no but it's a it's a guy that uh does like a puppet show with uh okay uh, with a sock character and the sock character is sort of similar to triumph themes and insult comic dog on conan oh, and like it's, it's that kind of thing and thing, don't you? well i think it's i think it was the opposite but you know i don't I'm know if it was sure. the opposite it was like he uh anyways he had a show and it was pretty funny sometimes it wasn't like it wasn't awful but it was kind of like the man show almost kind of thing you know or whatever like mm-hmm. it, i don't know but he's like become like a liberal guy and uh so they have like you know these viral posts that are going out of him saying stuff like well because it was aladdin it was bl- probably blue face so it wasn't racist <laughs> yeah and i've seen some kind of that stuff. But... yeah and uh he was kind of driving a lot of that stuff and and some of the, like like almost like truth or stuff about it like we don't know if these pictures are real and all that and um <laughs> even though even though well, Trudeau he, said it, like he is wearing a you know it's hard yeah, to yeah. <laughs> yeah skin color doesn't match that's for sure yeah sure oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh anyways but it's just becomes like an absurd thing because you see like people who are like members of parliament tweeting about ed the sock being like (laughs) it's not it's not it's not actually shoe polish or something and you're like (laughs) you know what's the quality of our debate here right now i don't know yeah that's crazy 
the thing that's cool to me though too is that this is this is really like a core thing that I I've, I've had problems with my whole life is that all of these people are like professional class people you know like MPs make something like I don't know like 140 grand a year or something right like it's like a minimum and it's all people who are like lawyers and stuff and really you know like they're they're living really well they're spending their day like being like okay you retweet ed the sock and uh, you know what i mean like it's it's like and or oh you know they're hiring like a pr firm that specializes in blackface or whatever you know what i mean it's like that kind of stuff that it's like it's people that think of really highly of themselves and probably give speeches all the time about like how we have to build a better democracy and all that you know and how lucky we are to live in the country and and then you know their actual days are all just basically like a British sitcom about like politics, just running things into the ground and not, you know, I don't know. It makes me uh, mad. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, I don't know. Um, speaking of like puppet comedians, have you ever seen anything from uh, Otto and George? He, he's passed now, but he, he used to be on Opie and Anthony every now and then. No. So that's one thing that's different about you and I, I guess, is that you have, you seem to have a lot of the background or knowledge about like some of the different, like Opie and Anthony stuff. I've never seen any of that really. Uh, I don't know. And some of the more like radio show stuff. I don't really, I've only listened to like love line. I never, I never watched like, I can't remember Howard Stern and all that. Yeah. So anyways, but yeah, so he's got a good one where, uh, the puppets on a plane. I flew recently. I got to meet the Pope. Oh, I was boy. flying. The Pope was sitting right next to me. It was cool. He was doing a crossword puzzle. You know, he turns to me. He goes, "Excuse me, a four-letter word for woman that ends with U N T." I said, "It's ant." He goes, "Oh, you got an eraser? I already wrote cunt in the book." Here. I, uh, I, uh, the Pope wrote cunt. Okay. <laughs> Pope wrote cunt, need it in a race. All right. Pope wrote cunt, pass it down. Okay. Don't drink the milk, it's spoiled. Pope wrote cunt. All right. Pope got a stinky pussy. Don't say that. The Pope got a stinky pussy. So, Wittgenstein, good, bad, or the greatest philosopher of all time? Yeah, I thought I thought it was pretty. I read a book, like a short book about him. I haven't encountered him much, even though I did like a degree in philosophy sort of like because i didn't really do this sort of philosophy that he's into but i don't know i feel like i probably get into it more if sort of learned about the connections between that and like i I read a book that kind of compared him to derrida and stuff Mm -hmm. kind of got into that and i read a short book also about just him in general one of those like who is kind of introduction kind of thing yeah i thought i thought it was interesting i mean i read that i see I, i only know the sort of like meme answers but i read that his main kind of uh, like tractist logic is whatever it's called you know the yeah, yeah. mathematical whatever i read that that was actually basically like a joke like that you it was supposed to like unwind itself so that when you go reach the conclusion you realize that the whole thing was just absurd yeah and that and that which is interesting because those are my favorite types of books are books that demonstrate their own theory and exemplify it while they're being written kind of thing like so i think that's cool if that's true but i also feel like i'm not in a position to judge if that's true because i haven't really you know i don't know i've heard so he's one of those guys like hegel where you hear completely separate and contradictory things all the time about them and you don't really know i don't know which one to kind of judge but yeah i don't know some of the stuff about like language games and all that stuff seems interesting I don't know. Yeah. yeah i guess i sort of feel similarly i haven't read any of his stuff really um for some reason in my mind there's some connection between him and kierkegaard which sort of seems interesting to explore i yeah. suppose they're both danish right yeah i'm not sure yeah but yeah he seems kind of like like he memed himself into insanity a little bit or something like yeah, I, I, yeah. From what I understand he kind of went crazy a little bit like you yeah. kind of realize the absurdity of his position it couldn't like deal with it kind of a thing or something yeah so that that reminds me of like Nietzsche or something when I read a lot about that kind of stuff though it helped me like when I was sort of diving into that level of theory that that kind of stuff it really did help me understand like just concepts of truth more and just just some of the different things about absurdity and 
I don't know, that kind of stuff really, it helped like settle me down a bit maybe. Like it just helped me kind of get to a point where I was able to, it was like with psychoanalysis, like with that in psychoanalysis to related things about, because a lot of psychoanalysis is just, it's like unraveling, you know, it's like the, I guess like the comparison is usually something like an onion that has no center, like the brain kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like it's just like yeah. a, or your yourself. It's just, it's just, you know, if you focus on any given point in it, it's not, you don't get the whole and yeah. And I don't know, I, I found that kind of stuff really interesting and it really helped me start to work through some mental health stuff and sort of prepared me for later on. And I think that, some of the stuff around how Wittgenstein like approaches truth, like really gets into that. But yeah, I don't know. It's a, uh, I also really have gotten to the point now though, where, and that's why I was making that joke about Noam Chomsky the other day, because I feel like I really don't like people digging into one person and then making it their whole philosophy or something. You know what I mean, like I really like, uh, I don't know. So I don't feel like I could go back to grad school for philosophy or something. Cause I really don't, unless, do you know what I mean? Like, or like for, for this kind of thing, like I could never see myself taking a class on this again, just because I don't, I don't, I don't care enough to get into it, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's cool how philosophy can provide that kind of mental health, Yeah. you know, stuff for people. It's, it, it's not the most immediate thing that you would think of as being helpful, but it's cool because it helps you uh, reframe things and just yeah. think about stuff differently, like really big, important stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, so I guess we come down on good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, question for Tom: Given that Islamophobia is a very racialized term, which just t- tends to mean anyone with brown skin, when you see or encounter any Islamophobia in your day-to-day life, does it affect you heavily, or are you able to remain more detached given that you're a late convert? Cheers. Um, it doesn't really. A, a, I I don't personally experience it. Obviously, I don't really appear muslim and i mean people who know that i'm muslim will kind of like rib me for it but it's never really anything very serious i i I don't take it very seriously on a personal level um when i see it like in the news or online or something that doesn't bug me too much either i guess i'm just sort of like i you know i know it's there it does irritate me when i see people who i think should know better kind of indulging in that sort of thinking like kind of buying into like war on terror type narratives about different places and stuff like that like that kind of bugs me um but i also you know i understand that those those people specifically have good intentions and they're not perfect and it doesn't really matter so like you know they're not personally hurting anyone by being ignorant or dumb about a certain thing so that you know whatever it doesn't really bother me that much um i did one time see something that really did bother me it was when this guy was harassing a hijabi who was just crossing the street and he was just like yelling at her calling her a terrorist all that kind of stuff that did bother me and i really like i was kind of ready to like throw down and fight or something like i was like ready to go but yeah you know, obviously I, that probably wouldn't have helped anything. And, uh, he kind of stopped, like he, he sort of drew attention and then he, I think he got embarrassed or self-conscious or something and, and just sort of like stormed off. So, but yeah, that, that didn't feel great to see that. Um, and I feel bad that people have to deal with it on that level, but I, I tend to think of it, it's much more like of a racism thing than it is a specifically like religious thing when it, when it's just about the religion and, and the kind of like low kind of critiques of islam that are ignorant or or whatever eh, whatever you know that's not my problem really if someone else has dumb ideas you know what i mean so just even a question on that um do you ever get worried about like the database stuff kind of thing like you might be flagged while flying or kind of you know if someone asks you questions that are too pointed or something you kind of get into it or something like that you know what i mean like do you think it'll ever affect you like that or I don't. I just, I don't. I don't. No, I really don't. Um, yeah. I mean, besides the fact that I I run it in Langley, I can just, yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. wipe myself out of the database. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Like, I I have been pulled aside in airports. Like when I was coming back from Jordan, I had a bunch of Israeli stamps because of from going to Palestine that you, you get stamped with Israeli stamps, and 
mm-hmm. you know, they ask questions about that, but I find that it's pretty easy to just get on their good side. Like they don't really perceive me as a threat. So anything yeah. I tell them, they just sort of buy it. The people that have a lot of problems with it is when they just, they can't convince them that they're telling the truth or that they're harmless. Like yeah, if you're visibly Muslim or Arab or, or something like that, then they're, they are just going to assume you know, some people, not all of them, obviously, but the people that are going to give you problems, are they're just not going to believe that you're harmless. So yeah. if you, if you say that you did something that was, you know, that you have some kind of like, Oh, I was just there as a student or something. Oh yeah, sure. You were there as a student. But, but if I say that like, Oh, okay. Makes sense. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't worry about that too much, I guess. Sure. I figure if it comes up, I'm screwed. Doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> what am I gonna do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's um, true. Okay, so a while ago we talked about a gambin a little bit, and someone sent in a comment. So, I'm a philosopher by trade, and I heard y'all talking about a gambin. A lot of philosophers say y'all, I guess, uh, calling him pretentious. While there's no doubt that that is part of it, the fact is that he was trained as a medievalist, and that tendency pretty much orients his approach. As such, he isn't being obtuse for being obtuse, but rather integrating his specialty into a discourse with contemporary theory. Also, I would really suggest, if you haven't, reading The Coming Community, wherein Agamben uses the medieval concept of hesiety to explain love in a way that I actually consider one of the most insightful discussions of love in its particularity, insofar as it both acknowledges contingent features while also recognizing that it isn't just that. All right, a lot of big words there, Mr. Philosopher. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I have read The Coming Community. I thought it was fine, but I didn't really get a lot out of it. Like I, It was perfectly agreeable, I guess, but I didn't really find it that insightful or anything maybe i should go back to it it's a pretty short read if i remember correctly yeah and uh yeah i mean i i think i kind of agree with what he's saying like he's pretentious to but it's not like it's just empty you know he is saying stuff that's useful so and i don't think you i mean i think it's pretty obvious also you weren't being dismissive no like i uh, like a game so yeah yeah. Very much, yeah. I think he's so. really like important and kind of overlooked. Although maybe not. I mean, I don't know. I think uh, you know the the smarty pants do you know read his stuff and use his stuff. But I think it, in the kind of like broader discourse, he's sure. a little bit under underplayed. Why do women use Twitter when they are unable to read? Beats me, man. I don't know what they're doing. I, I figure they all got those Alexa bot things. You know, yeah. they're dictating their their tweets about whatever whatever they got going on that day. Yeah, I feel like what would probably happens is there's like a guy that they flip that kind of like becomes their servant or something, and they uh, there's like ten of them lounging in a room <laughs> like the women, and then there's this one guy that has to have like a tweet deck open yeah. and just has like ten accounts, and he just like puts in stuff like you know a podcast is two or more white guys or something like he <laughs> he's the guy that has to type it in yeah and they just they just sort of reflect and otherwise they just are listening to uh true crime true podcast. crime podcasts oh my god yeah that was exactly <laughs> what i was about to say so and then uh, that's i think that's just the basic mechanics of it yeah that and makes then, sense yeah i i mean i don't i don't want to pry you know it's not my yeah. business how they how they uh their their strategies of resistance you know what i mean but yeah um, yeah that makes sense um next question is your podcast named after jack black not the movie guy about being a hobo because that book owns it is in fact named after that book yeah i actually uh grabbed a audiobook of the book and i started listening to it the other night and mm-hmm. i was completely captured i just i only intended to just kind of see if the narrator sounded decent and whatever and mm-hmm. i ended up listening to it for like an hour and i was like oh man this is great i i remember why i love this book so much so yeah. we definitely got to do like an episode about the book we'll kind of re- i'll reread it you'll read it and then we'll we'll do an episode about it i think that's maybe, a good idea yeah maybe with someone else who's also read it or something sure uh, yeah really really fantastic read Don, have you ever been to an Islamic service at a mosque? And Tom, have you ever been to a church on Sunday? Um, have you ever been to an Islamic service? I'm actually not. I can't remember. I don't think so. No. 
No, the only so what's it called? The call to prayer, azan or something? A, a, yeah, azan or adan, depending. Yeah, I think I think I remember hearing those in uh, Western China when I was there. Okay, that's my only experience with like a Islamic majority kind of culture kind of thing. So yeah, um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, the cool thing about they're they're called it's called Juma, the Friday congregational yeah. prayer. About Jumas is. I mean, I don't know if this is even so different from other religious communities and stuff, but sometimes people, for whatever reason, have this idea about them is that, like, they wouldn't be welcomed if they just kind of popped in or whatever, like, especially, yeah. like, women, oh, do I have to wear hijab, all that kind of stuff. And it, from what I can tell, like, no, like, it's very open. Um, yeah. it's, it's very much the thing where it's like anyone is welcome to just kind of, like, pop in. You don't have to pray. You don't have to know what you're doing. Only thing is take your shoes off. There's a always a little space before the actual like prayer area where you can leave your shoes. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that or anything, but yeah, if you're curious, I, I think, you know, not you personally necessarily Donald, but just, you know, anybody, yeah, just pop on in on a Friday. It's usually around noon or one, one o'clock, something like that. You can always check it up on their website or call them or whatever, but yeah, uh, it's generally a very welcoming thing. I mean, I'd encourage anyone who's interested to just go ahead and, and, check it out as far as a sunday mass i don't think that i have been to a sunday thing i think i've definitely been in churches i didn't grow up like with any kind of church thing as part of like our family or anything like that so i can't really remember i feel like i've been to a couple services i, I know i've been to one at a wedding but yeah yeah so, I don't know. I guess I I could check that out too. I suppose it's sort mm-hmm. of the same deal, right? Like anyone's welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can't do the, you, like you can't take communion, but you can show up and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. Do you think it would be weird if I? I don't even know if I would be Islamically allowed to do this, but would it be weird if I did like Islamic prayers in the church? That would probably be seen as some kind of. I, like statement or something you know yeah i think people would be confused at that you know? um, yeah i mean like i obviously in my saying that to you you know it's not like my my personal opinion but yeah like the i think that the um yeah i think that would be i, I think people most of the time would probably just not know what you're, so yeah. um i don't think it i don't know if they would you know immediately jump to you being negative or something they just wouldn't know but they would think that maybe you were a different type of Catholic, maybe or something. <laughs> I don't know. But I mean, like in terms of, yeah, I mean, it's because it, with a mass or something, it's, it's like a format and it's like an actual process. So right. it, uh, it involves specific readings and prayers and stuff. So, yeah. Um, but, uh, in terms of just going to the church and being able to pray in that, yeah, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I guess it would be kind of like if, someone just showed up and joined the prayer lines at a mosque and like was doing different stuff. Yeah. That that would be, that would be pretty weird. That would kind of disturb the, you know, it it just like wouldn't work. Yeah. I think Um, like an old grandma or something might yell at you. (laughs) Well, that might be fun. Because sometimes I've thought like when I like say been on my way home from work or something and it's the the time for prayer and I pass by a church, I, I, kind of wonder like oh i wonder if it would be okay like if i popped in to do my prayers there just because like there wasn't a mosque in the area but there's a church like i i imagine you just have to talk to whoever's you know in charge of the place and yeah and get there okay or whatever you need you need like a is it a kibla that they call it like the the direction yeah so kibla is the uh direction to mecca do you need to orient your prayers there or you just yeah but it's not hard to figure that out like okay Almost everywhere in North America, you you just go northeast. Okay. Which, uh, they changed that at some point fairly recently, like within the past few decades. It used to be that everyone would look east or southeast a little bit, you know, because okay. you think of the map, right? That would make sense. But apparently they did some kind of like, I don't know, they figured out that it's actually shorter if you go northeast somehow. Okay. So like yeah, that's yeah. the way you're supposed to do it. So I figure yeah. if people have been looking one way <laughs> for so long and now we're looking the other way okay. and the whole point isn't really that you're like it's not like you're directing prayer beams at the <laughs> or something like the idea is like really like the intention in your heart you know so yeah 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 
you know, it, I, it's not it's not as big a deal as I think people think. It but is. it all that also, yeah, that also might kind of look weird if you, everyone else was sitting in pews and yeah, you were, yeah. You, were, you were you were directed. I probably feel direction. weird doing it. I, I was just you know, it's yeah. just something that I thought. No, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, so. what language do you think is the most beautifully sounding? I really like French because people sing it, kind of thing. It's like more, it's like a sing song kind of thing. Um, yeah. In, in like, especially in like, yeah, I don't know. I just, I really like that, the way that it sounds. Um, yeah. Yeah. Canadian French is funny though. It's, yeah. It's, it kind of loses that and it just becomes really funny sounding. Yeah. It's kind of like, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I like the way French people speak, but I don't necessarily think the language itself is has the the beauty yeah, of it. yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's more that people kind of like coo to each other instead of talking yeah, yeah. i think uh farsi sounds really good um, that's cool yeah i'll go with farsi i'm not even really sure what farsi sounds like but that sounds cool though that, you know yeah i don't yeah. know anywhere i'd say something so you could hear it but... yeah i think chinese sounds kind of neat but it, it's Ugh, uh, no. i don't know <laughs> chinese I, I don't... is the worst like mandarin right <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, I also, I mean, at some level, I like German, too, just because it's like, I don't know, it's kind of funny to me. I don't know. It sounds so self-important in some ways. I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't know. I guess maybe it's also because 90% of it is commands in a movie or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I actually think, uh, maybe I'm biased, but I think Finnish sounds really good, too. That's cool. I don't I don't really like those, uh, like the different, I mean, I know they're completely different, I guess, in a lot of ways, but the different nordic ones i don't know i can't the the worst one for me for some reason is dutch i don't know yeah, why but it's just dutch, dutch sounds like it's like uh, really confusing it sounds like someone who had a stroke or something <laughs> yeah yeah all right not a question but you guys should visit new orleans it's my favorite city in the us i've heard new orleans is really good uh and i was actually me and a friend were planning on visiting new orleans at one point another muslim and then we realized well there's nothing to do there except gamble drink and eat pork so yeah 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 yeah. maybe not so much i don't that's, know i'm sure yeah. it's fine though, that's the know? first thing i thought when you said that too is that i was like well <laughs> it's not really that's yeah. how you keep the muslims out <laughs> you know <Yeah. laughs> it's gotta go all, all out on the cajun thing yeah i don't really have much interest like for las vegas or something like that i think it would be fun to see the desert or something but i don't know yeah that's the kind of place that just seems like horror to me where you're just stuck around a bunch of drunk people or yeah something like that, I, right? I, but, I don't really so. have an interest in las vegas yeah. although yeah the desert sounds cool we should do like a, a you can't win road trip down to zorro ranch and yeah buster wide open and see what's what's going sure. on down there yeah a raid or something yeah yeah you live youtube it and whatever and yeah rush you yeah. get mike yeah that'd be good goofy ass. <laughs> <laughs> like he's got all this funny gear that's, that's something our audience doesn't know about mike he's a he's a i mean you you've heard him talk about all the pizza stuff but he he's a he's deep into it guys <laughs> um all right uh what do you guys think of antifa i feel like a lot of it is people who are pretty it tends to be really like a social media kind of thing i think a lot of the time where there's people who just experience fights with fascists a lot. And there's people that want to fight with fascists a lot or something like that, you know, like yeah. there's different types of it. Kind of thing. There's people who are like in punk scenes where, and stuff where fascists actually do come and attack them all the time. And then they kind of attack them back and stuff. And, and uh, then there's always kind of this broader penumbra or whatever around it, where it's people who are, you know, just joining in because they want to be tough or something. I don't know. Uh, there's there's this uh, Doug Stanhope bit where he's talking about uh, war, and he said that like we should set up a sort sort of a system where uh, troops like sign up, but then they just have to go fight each other somewhere, kind of thing. Like they, and then he was like, he's like, as long as people who are killing people are killing other people that want to kill people, it's like that seems like an ideal situation, <laughs> and then you don't have to worry about war. And uh, I thought I think I feel like whenever whenever I hear about Antifa, like I think I think of that joke because. It's like, you know, the ideal society would include Antifa and fascists fighting each other, but, but only each other. Like, that's like, yeah, the, like gladiators. I yeah, I think that's fine. I think I, 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 you know, and I always have the gut reaction to against it that it's obviously totally false that it's somehow ruining the left or something or somehow 
derailing things or something. It's like there's so many other things that are, you know, more of a problem or whatever that, you know, it's it might be a sideshow in some ways, but it's it's totally irrelevant to everyone else mostly. So, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it, I guess. I I think, yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't have a problem with like the people in Antifa so much. A lot of them seem kind of silly. A lot of them, I'm sure, have good reasons to be involved in something like that. But the people who act like it's like you owe them something, like they're, you know, yeah. some kind of last line of defense against the fascist mob or something, like that's pretty ridiculous to me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That just seems really so, silly. Yeah. But, uh, you know, in general, I feel like if they feel like doing it, then might as well. But if they don't, you know, I just don't, I'm not going to get involved in that. I'm not like, what am I going to do kind of thing? So, you know, yeah. Um, not like, imagine me trying to like, beat up a group of fascists or something like that. I don't know. (laughs) I would like get hit once and then lay down and cry. And it wouldn't even be like a falling laying down. I would just slowly lay down and then cry or something. So, yeah. (laughs) Have you guys ever been in a situation where you feared the real life consequences to your online actions? Um, I have not. But I have been, and this was before Twitter and everything. This was when I was in college. So I was still a something awful guy. And I had been on there just a few years. And this was when I was kind of in LF doing like commie posting kind of stuff. Yeah. And I I didn't see this myself, but I was I was at a party with some friends. And then one of my friends, and we were there like, 10 15 minutes or something and one of my friends comes up to me and says dude there's a guy in the other room going nuts because he heard you showed up and said baby finland that hardline maoist asshole da, 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 da. some drunk guy was really uh, mad about me being there now i don't know i didn't see it myself so i'm not totally sold that that was actually happening but that is really funny if that did happen yeah <laughs> i don't know yeah No, the only time I ever kind of felt like I flew too close to the sun kind of thing was uh, what's the name of the person that wrote the Harry Potter books? I can't remember her name. Anyway, J.K. Rowling. Yeah, so she she uh, quoted one of my uh, troll posts, but she didn't include she didn't include the my at. She just included the picture, I I think. And it was like a it was like it was pretty early. One of those jokes about like uh, Bana, whatever, like the uh, Syrian girl, and it was about like buying more f-35s or something like that anyways so uh she posted this thing like denouncing it and saying it was part of a smear campaign against her and all this stuff and um she has like millions and millions of followers so i thought like this is going to rebound to me somehow like people are going to find out it's me and like you know there's going to be some some like stupid news story about it or something <laughs> i thought but abs it, the only thing that happened was that it uh it was a popular tweet on her feed and then i think the the banner account or one of those other accounts uh said you know something about it too but other than that it disappeared like anything else in the day like just nothing nothing came from it whatsoever really and just you know disappeared so but at, when i saw that I, at first i was like oh man i don't know if i should have done that and then uh yeah <laughs> so then after that i sort of laughed because of, you know whatever but um yeah and that's probably 20, 20 years later and some Turkish guy appears in your bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, up. This yeah. is for <laughs> <laughs> the other, the other thing that came pretty close to that was I made a joke that like something, something about the CIA or something, some, some weird, I can't remember what it was. It was something about them having two screens and seeing like pro Trump and anti Trump tweets on them or something on one side, the number of them or something. I don't know. It was something really stupid like that. And uh, a number of people who are like those NatSec kind of people, mm-hmm. like the different the different people who like think of themselves as experts and are like, you know, they have like a three degrees removed connection to the CIA or something, yeah. right? Like they were like, I was a consultant for a consultant who was a consultant at the CIA or something. Yeah. And then uh, a bunch of them thought that I was like, they, they thought that I was trying to spread lies about the CIA or something, even though it was just an obvious joke. Like anyone that read it would, would think that. I was just making fun of them or something. And uh, that went viral within their sort of community kind of thing, like where these people with like the blue checks and stuff were sending it around and, and posting a lot about it. And uh, I was antagonizing them about it. So I thought that like for a bit there, that was the other one where I thought there might be some sort of consequence where like 
anytime you have like deal with stupid people with a lot of power <laughs> you're kind of like i don't know in their own little communities you're like i don't know yeah but other than that whatever they were just mad like you know don't spread lies about the cia that's our job <laughs> yeah 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 it's funny too when you read like how many employees some of these places have and they're just like about like not not the CIA directly, but like a lot of the different like online like NSA sort of stuff. Like even the one in Canada has like thousands and thousands of employees or something. And it's so like, what are they doing all day? I don't know. So yeah. Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. We gotta shave some of this budget and <laughs> yeah. some of the hurt a little bit. We we should be getting some of this money. Yeah. Well I should yeah. be honest, yeah. you know, denigrating Antifa. Come on, guys, give us a little yeah. bit of something. Sure. Okay. Um let's finish with this one. Uh, what's the last YouTube video you guys have watched? Uh, let me see here. What is the last YouTube video I watched? Okay, so what we got here is I watched a tonkatsu chashu soy milk ramen recipe, which I can't eat. It's a pork broth, but I watched that. I watched some City Skylines videos. I like to watch people do really detailed City Skylines builds. I watched a video about Magic the Gathering Arena because there's a new update coming out. Mm -hmm. And I watched Joe Rogan episode with Mark Normand, who's really funny. I really like Mark Normand. So that was a pretty cool episode. So what I've been watching is is very shameful. Uh, I was watching the Red Letter Media um, Half in the Bag episode about Batman versus Superman, a movie that came out like five years ago or something and uh, was not good and i did not like it and the review is more positive no it's not never mind it's negative but it's like uh so that was i was going through all the videos of theirs that i watched just for like something to have on and uh, yeah so it's kind of a very very low tier of relevance to today in a lot of ways but you know it was kind of fun and uh and then i've also been trying to watch more like lecture videos of like when those were a thing 10 years ago or so Mm -hmm. so all the different yale lectures and i want to start watching the mit ones about computer science and all that just to get learn about it and uh yeah cool i don't know which one of us has the more embarrassing (laughs) (laughs) history here i was gonna say when you say oh it's very shameful i was like i don't know what's more shameful than uh like magic the gathering and yeah yeah rogan but at least that's like stuff that happened within the last year or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. We'll see. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, let's wrap it up here. Sure. So, thanks for listening, guys. Our Twitter is at you can't win pod. You can send us more questions there to Curious Cat, and you can also do so in Discord if you are a Patreon subscriber. So, thanks for listening. Thanks, guys.